Okay, uh, part two. Um, I ran out of space on my phone uh, doing the uh, previous video. Uh, so I'm just here to finish up. Uh, <clears throat> so, was gone. I was down for a week, so I was gone from the little hospital. I was down for a week. I got this other little place. That's cool. You know what I'm saying? I got about a mile walk to the job. My roommate told me I should get a bike. And I was like, okay, that's cool. You know, I never thought about that. So I think I'm going to get a bike. Because that would save some time and some shoes. Because I wear out a brand new pair of shoes. I had about two months. Tread about gone on. That's how much walking I'm doing for like home, bus, job, work, to the job, work, then from work to the bus, over here, over there, down the street, up to the crib. So, I about wore the tread on, but that's cool because I'm going to use those as gym shoes. Like I said, I'm going to get my gym membership back cracking. Y'all gonna see your boy uh, looking real extra sexy slim pretty soon. You know, uh, if you're interested in my regiment, as for like my workout regiment, or, you know, like my health eating habits, feel free to ask. I have no problem sharing. I don't have a secret. It's pretty much just, you know, hard work. It's pretty much what it boils down to. I mean, there's other stuff too. But it pretty much just boils down to hard work. So, like I had kind of previously mentioned in the other video, um, I have multiple warrants uh, from St. Louis County and City that I need to pay. Uh, I do have my license. Uh, I guess they reinstated my license. I guess they reinstated everybody's license. So that's good. That's like $65 that I don't have to pay the state. But I do have to pay these other warrants because you really need to be driving out here. Clean and clear. The prison industrial complex is real and it is a trap. And they want you to fuck up. They want you to drive illegal. They want you to rob, kill, steal. So they can lock you up because they get paid off of it. They don't care about you. They care about their pockets. And they get money from you being in prison. So, don't do that. Be out here riding legal. Jail too. County jails get money for you being in there too. They all in the same boat. It's just big pine, little pine. That's it. You know? So, that way, you don't even have to worry about the police. As long as you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, driving like you got some sense, probably won't fuck with you. Now, I might suggest some tinted windows. Uh, because if you are a melanoid-looking uh, person, such as myself, see this beautiful brown skin? No, nah, I'm playing. But, see this melanoid here? Well, this melanoid is a, a feared person in this country really fear and that's why they want to kill us they fear us they fear we're going to kill them they fear we're going to fuck their women and their daughters and they fear that we'll put them back in slavery and it's just all this fear going on with the white man and as we know I said it before I'll say it again we know that the police is the KKK. The Grand Wizard of the KKK flat out came out and said, but how do we know this? Because the original job for the police or the original name was the Slave Patrol. Anybody who escapes off the plantation, they send the Slave Patrol after them. Bring your black ass back. Then they're going to give you some lashings and do all type of stuff. You know how they used to do. But I'm here to tell you, slavery isn't over. Um, I'm not going to do a video on, I know I'm getting sidetracked, but hey, it happens. Just follow. So, I'm not going to get into the whole prison industrial complex, uh, 
Well, that's one of those things where uh, I suggest you uh, Google Michelle Alexander. I know she's got a wonderful book uh, about the prison industrial complex and uh, probably about the school to prison pipeline as well. Uh, as far as America locking people up and how they're getting paid and how it works and this, that, and the other. So, Michelle Alexander, Prison Industrial Complex, go look up this sister. She is a beautiful, smart, intelligent sister. She dropping some real heat. So, I suggest you check that out. I had to plug her in. I was like, whoa. Like, when I heard her speak, you know, doing a speaking engagement for a Christian conference, I was like, whoa, this sister is deep. Your sister is conscious. She is the real deal. Holyfield family, I'm trying to tell you. Michelle Alexander. So I suggest you get you some tinted windows if you are a person of this fine chocolate color. Darker, lighter. Doesn't matter. Just whatever little chocolate shade you got. I would suggest you get some tints on your car so the police don't fuck with you. Because we know old Gail... Uh, up in, I believe, yeah, up in New York. Y'all heard about old Gail. Uh, I, I don't know her name. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do a video about her. Uh, I'm just going to spend a couple seconds talking about her. But old Gail, she was an investment banker up in New York. Y'all know the one I'm talking about. If you don't, you can Google it. You can use Big Brother. Big Brother Google. Big Brother Google. How do I find the gal in New York who was the investment banker who drove the BMW? And you're going to find it. Uh, but this sister driving around in a BMW, not a brand new one, it was 05. So it was 10 years old. You know, 10, 11 years old, depending on when it came out. But this BMW is 10 years old. It's not even new. The cops stopped her, arrested her, impounded her car, then she got out, then they called her, hey, come down, get your car, so she's like, yeah, so about my car, she gets put in the mental institution for like three days, three weeks, three something, eight days, I'm not quite sure, but you get what I'm saying, she was unjustly put into a uh, incarceration, mental incarceration facility and uh, given all type of drugs and God knows what like like they did Sandra Bland she had pot in her system how do you have pot that strong a pot in your system first of all it was too strong you smoke all day every day Wiz Khalifa Snoop Dogg 2 chains and you still would not equal the amount of THC in her system so we know they did something that's why she was tweaking. That's why she didn't want to eat that food. But we're not talking about Sandra Bland or R.I.P. to her. But it's the same scenario. They pump old Gail for the drugs. Sorry about that. I had to pop my neck. Feeling a little stiff. But they pumped her full of drugs. And she had to lie to say that President Obama did not follow her on Twitter like... President Obama doesn't really run his Twitter account. Other people do. He gets on there once in a while. Hey, God bless America. B.O. Barack Obama. God, God, God bless America, family. B.O. Barack Obama. Barack Obama following her on Twitter. They thought that was miraculous. My God, Barack Obama follows this nigga on Twitter. She must be important. Like, really? Nigga, they probably just follow whoever followed the White House. Bro. They probably just follow whoever followed Barack Obama. If you follow Barack Obama, you're going to get a follow back. That's what they do. I'm pretty sure. I don't follow the man. I don't really like Twitter like that. I use it. I really don't like it like that. But that's beside the point. So she got out. Then they hit old Gail with like a $35,000 bill or some shit. Excuse me. Back was itching. They hit her like... 35,000, 13,000. It was some thousands. It was definitely some double digit thousands that they hit her with for her stay there and the drugs. So now she's suing the uh, uh, state of New York or the city of New York. Yeah. 
she's suing. She's currently. Uh, this happened last year. Uh, it's just the story came out very recently. So she's suing uh, New York City. And uh, sister, I know you probably never see this video, but if you do, I hope you get everything you can get. I wouldn't settle. I would ream them. I would clean their pockets out. Because if it was you on the other end, they would not hesitate to do the same thing. This is war. Break them niggas for whatever you can get. Get it. So, you know, if I find out more about that situation, I will definitely keep you guys updated. Okay, cool. Going on 11 minutes. I had to delete some songs and some mixtapes and stuff off of my phone. Uh, hey. So, uh, my phone, I got a Samsung Note 3. I've had it for like two years. And I like it. But it's a two models down. I'm ready to upgrade to a 5. 64 gig. And uh, something happened to my phone. And I guess maybe the software got corrupted or something. But now my SD card registers. But I can't use it. Anything I put on my SD card. Uh, it becomes corrupted. And uh, unusable. I lost the whole. All my videos that way. All my previous videos. The first ones that I did. Uh, I had another video. That I did. Uh, talking about the race war. Uh, and. Uh, a response to Yvette Carnell. And her response to Mr. Farrakhan. That was a heavy video, and I lost that because I accidentally deleted it off YouTube. Because uh, YouTube was tripping. I thought I had uploaded two instead of one. And I accidentally deleted the video. I was like, oh. So I scrambled. I went to the library. And I found out that's when all my data on my memory card was corrupted. So all the songs and movies and stuff that I put on there was corrupted. It's done. It doesn't work anymore. So I lost a whole video that way. So now I can't store anything on my memory card. So between the apps and all the songs and albums and stuff that I got on my phone, I had to free up some space so that I can uh, continue on with this vlog part two. Um, let me see. What else is going to be going on? Um, not sure if I mentioned... Uh, that I'm in a relationship, a very nice one, I might add, and, uh, you know, it's been a while, it's hard out here for good brothers, you know, it seemed like all the, all the no good Negroes, seemed like all the no good me, all the no good men get caught first, something about them, something about those no good Niggas. Prime example. Yo dude be having all type of females in your car. It's not even his car. It's your car. You be having all type of gals in her car. You live there for free. You don't do nothing. You don't dope. You don't have a license. But you slanging that fire so she keep you around. Right? That might be what it is. I don't know. But it's just something about them no good dudes. So I ran into a lot of females who had no good dudes. And, you know, be like, damn, really? So I've done more for you. I mean, I ain't even spent no money. Just... Well, maybe has spent a little bit of money. But I'll be like, okay, so I've done more for you in three days. This nigga has done in the last three months. Just stuff like, y'all supposed to be going on a trip. You packing. You got like three, four kids. Whatever, three kids. You packing, so you packing your stuff. You got the kids stuff, the stroller. You got all of that. All you asked him to do was pack up the game. And for real, he should have been helping packing them kids' clothes and everything, too. No good nigga. 
Couldn't even do that. Couldn't even do that. But that's what she wanted. Okay. Cool. So I ran into a lot of them. And then especially with my sorry about that. Especially giving my uh current financial state. Um uh, it's not that I can't necessarily get a woman. It's just finding one of quality when I'm ready to look for one. Right now, at this present moment in time, as I speak to you, I am in a committed relationship and I'm completely happy. But a few weeks ago, I was single and had been single for the last few years. Okay, it's cool. You know, it is what it is. I've talked to a few females here and there. But basically, I'm trying to build myself up so I can put myself in a good position so you know I can start doing some some real deal things out in these streets perfectly legal getting a couple businesses going doing this and doing that that's what I've been kind of focused on so and then I had these warrants I'd be like okay well a girlfriend gonna cost you some type of money right I don't really have that money to spend. I need to be paying these warrants. Then once I pay the warrants, I have a little bit of ends freed up. But I really need a car. I want that car. It's not a them thing. It's a me thing. I, I got to have that car. I got to have some type of transportation. I ain't trying to be catching no bus. I'm 28. I don't like catching the bus as it is. Hey, if you catch the bus, 28, 58, 98. That's cool if that's what you want to do. But for me, catching the bus is for the birds. I got so much other stuff that I could be doing, should be doing, and need to be doing if I didn't have to walk and catch the bus. Um, but funny how God works. So in the midst of, I guess you could say, turmoil, like I, I'm the best I've ever been. Uh, I make, you know, crappy money, but I've got an apartment, and I've got a gray head on my shoulders. I go to work every day. I'm a hard worker, brother. But I was just trying to take care of this other stuff before I really got to, uh, like, jump back into dating scene. Because I'm like, well, that's going to cost money. You know, you, hell, Netflix costs money. Well, I pay for Netflix, so that's a terrible example. It's a terrible, terrible example. But food costs money. Everything costs money. Then I could be putting towards something else. Then once I do that, I'll be labeled like, okay, for what you want most, there's a cost that must be paid. I wanted to get my warrants and stuff taken care of as soon as possible. Uh, so I figured that if I just not date, then that is the cost of saving money. It is a necessary evil. It ain't like I can't get them. Just I don't be just be rapping with them like that. But I did say that if uh, if I was to be in a relationship or start talking to a uh, nice young woman, as it were, she would have to literally like well not literally, okay. Um, metaphorically fall into my lap. Right? Like, just, bam. Just, love at first sight, like, R. Kelly, you made me love you. I'm talking about, like, just, just that. Just dropped into the lap, just, no work, just, bam. Like, you know, it's just, uh, like, Christmas came early, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, just like you order something, and it's right there at your doorstep. When you open up the door, it is a present. You've been waiting on whatever it is you order from Amazon or eBay. And it comes. It's right there at your doorstep. Christmas came early. And uh, essentially, that's how me and uh, my girl hooked up. We knew each other uh, 11 years ago. We used to go to the same school. I thought she was cute back in the day. Uh, but I was shy, and I'm introvert. I'm extremely introverted. Um, so I never holler. 
Didn't see her for 11 years. And uh, then one day on Facebook, just out of the blue, I got a message. And then, you know, hours of Facebook messaging that night. And then the next night talking on the phone and texting and, you know, all the things that you do. And I'm not a talking and texting type of person. I'll text you. I'll talk. I'll get to the point. Like when I talk to my brother. Hey, what's going on? What's up, kid? How you doing? Good. How's family? Good. Good, good. How's job? Good. Mm. How's everything going with you, bro? But he be talking to me. How's everything going? Man, you know, same old, same old. Living the dream. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay. I'll come rap with you one day. You know, I'll call you. We'll have lunch. All right. Bam. Done. Sent that text. Hey, this is what it is. What's good? Blah, blah, blah. So I don't even be on the phone hour. I don't even be on the phone for hours. But it just so happened. Me and my girl kicked it off so tough. Like, it just don't even seem. That's, that's. Like, it's like the time standing still. Have you ever been with somebody? And that's the best way to describe it. And, uh, you know, I learned this from a, a previous relationship. If you've ever been with a woman, you feel like when you with her, or you talking with her, just time stands still. And then y'all talking so tough, you look up and it's daylight. Like, I'm talking about y'all been talking since 7 o'clock that night. Y'all just be talking about that real heavy. I'm talking about that real heavy stuff, man, like building and, and coming together and, and doing this and man this that and the third I'm talking about man y'all just so y'all just so deep into each other conversation that you look up and the sun is out again that's the type of stuff that I'm talking about I haven't had that in a couple years matter of fact I never had it before so it's only happened twice once with old Gail and once with my current girlfriend and this one even better God bless me with a real one. Just out of the blue. Just, it's craziness how everything just jumped off. Like we've been in the same city for practically 11 years and never ran into each other. I see a lot of people. I get around town. I hit Florissant, Ferguson, County, City, North Side, This Side, West Side. I'm all over the place. I know people. I get around. But I've never seen her. In a whole, like, 10, 11 years she's been down here. I never seen her. But God just Okay, put that damn bam right here. You perfect for her. She perfect for you. Bam. You know what I'm saying? The Bible say something to the effect of what God put together, let no man asunder. Like, don't tear that apart. You know what I'm saying? It's just it's crazy how everything went down. And uh so I'm happy. Happiest I've ever been, family. When I'm, It's not like when I was single, I was unhappy because before you really learn how to be in a relationship, you have to learn with being okay with being single. You have to learn to be patient and wait on somebody who's right for you. And trust me, it get hard. 28, ready to settle down, start a family, do things that a man should do if you're still 29, 30, 32, 55, 68, and you still in the club. Nigga, you failed. You failed. Hell, I can understand maybe a lounge. If you're one of them type of dudes that just has like steady relationships, never dates, you know, just like never really like gets married, just dates. For years and years, just never wanted to get married, never had kids. That's cool, but you don't need to be in the club. A lounge, maybe. A club. But uh, I'm getting ready to run out of time. Uh, so, I just want to say, man, I'm blessed by the Lord. He, he helped me come to some things with the TV, the realization, and he blessed me with a fire woman. Uh, man, it's, it's some other stuff, too, man, I want to tell y'all. But I only got about three minutes left on the camera before I run out of space. So... I got to wrap this up and get out of here, man. I'm going to chop it up with y'all pretty damn soon. I am King David. You can reach me on Google+, YouTube, King David 314 
You can reach me on Instagram and Twitter at Fly Till I Die. That's F L Y T I L L D I W E. I'm King David, and I'm out this piece.